Friday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and an arrogant man, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, You are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, My Lord are you, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from 1 Timothy 1, 1 1-2 and 12-14. Now 1 Timothy, like 2 Timothy and Titus, are called the pastoral letters and they most probably weren't written by Paul. The reason we make this judgment is that the ecclesiology, which is expressed in these letters, is much more advanced than we hear in Paul's last letters. It appears as if they were written by a disciple, but written with Paul's name. The reason for that was to give them apostolic authority. And that was a common practice in the first century AD. Nowadays, we would consider it a very dishonest thing to do, but in the first century AD, It was done normally. Well, this Paul is writing to Timothy, who was one of his disciples. And he, first of all, greets him. And then he speaks about the fact that God has chosen Paul to be a symbol of mercy, because he was the one who least deserved to be forgiven. He persecuted Christians. He tried to wipe out the Christian faith. And nevertheless, mercy was shown to him. Therefore, he's a symbol of what we should show to others. Remember, mercy is not forgiving somebody because they deserve it. Mercy is forgiving them because they need it. Whether they ask us or not, whether they even recognize it or not, we see them as broken people, and all we want to do is heal them. The Gospel is from Luke 6, 39-42. It continues this idea of mercy, but in the sense of not judging others. Why should we try to move a splinter from our brother's eye when we have a plank in our own. It's so often we can see the faults in others, and we don't see it in our own lives. There's a great story of a man who goes to the doctor because he thinks his wife is losing her hearing. And he says, how can I see how bad it is? Doctor says, easy, try an experiment. Stand 15 feet in back of her, say something. See how close you have to get before she hears. So 15 feet in back, he says, hon, what's for supper? There's no answer. Moves up five feet, hon, what's for supper? No answer. 
Another five feet. Hun, what's for supper? No answer. Finally, he's standing alongside of her and says, Hun, what's for supper? She turns to him and says, for the fourth time, chicken. He was the one who had the problem. It's so easy to see the flaws in other people. The only way that we can truly help other people is by looking at our own hearts and seeing what needs conversion. And maybe by our example, by our willingness to humble ourselves and seek conversion, we'll enable them to look at their lives and also seek conversion. And may God bless us.